Okay, hello and welcome back to part two of our lesson 13 in stepper motors for PIC microcontroller uh, construction and software development. We will be uh, now looking at the software to uh, go with our stepper motor controller. Um, just to recap, we've got our four different transistors, which are just going to be our switches for our different uh, coils that are in our stepper motor. And they're c connected to C0, 1, 2, and 3 of our micro. So, let's go ahead and get to the software, shall we? Alright, now for our steppers, we're still using the 886. Um, you can use any one. Um, actually, I think when I first did this, I used the 676, which is a little 14-pin micro. So, anything will do. You're just going to flip things on and off. Um, normal fuses, delay, form, form megahertz, no big. Now, I went ahead and labeled just for convenience, C0, 1, 2, and 3, as magnet 1, 2, and 3, and 4, which, uh, you know, I figured was fitting since that's basically what a stepper motor is comprised of is electromagnets. Um, <coughs> I put a define statement for time. This is the delay time between steps. Um, I did that because I just didn't want to have to type it a whole bunch of times and go ch find it in the code and change it so you kind of can change it here globally. Then I've got a global variable called step. What this will do is it will store the last step sequence um, what, so that way you know what step sequence you're in uh, when you want to later in your code step more. Um, let's see, if we go ahead and get into it, I've got move stepper forward and I've got move stepper in reverse. Now, for to better understand the sequencing, I have uh, done a little bit of an Excel file here and I'm going to pull up. Basically we're operating this even though this one is technically a bipolar um, stepper motor. We're going to be running it in a unipolar uh, way. Uh, that's why that's why we tied the uh, tied this yellow and white together and tied them to 12 volts as you saw previously. Um, we're basically running it in unipolar mode. Bipolar mode requires more uh, transistors. It requires eight transistors, which I can show you if you guys want. I can show you that. I'm going to try to uh, copy off this one page from a uh, Thompson Airpax uh, Mectronics uh, data sheet collection uh, that shows you all of this, that kind of gives you kind of a more idea of how to connect these up and make them work. Um, but uh, I my copiers broke right now so I gotta get that fixed and then I can uh, post that but um, basically uh, we're gonna run it in unipolar mode so what you've got you've got your Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 which is you know corresponds to your transistors here okay except uh, for me the way I laid this out you have to excuse me the numbering really this one's one two three and four because it corresponds with C0123. So sorry about that. Remember that that's actually kind of backwards when looking at this. So you've got Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. <coughs> so mag1, mag2, mag3, mag4 in our case. Um, basically this is the sequencing. If you're the first step in the sequence, you want Q1 to be on, Q2 to be off, 3 to be on, 4 to be off, 2, on, off, off, on, three off on off on four off on on off and one on off on off very straightforward so that's basically what this this does when you look at this you've got your we set uh, we set how many steps you want in the function definition as a parameter of the function um, we say that the we start a counter variable and with that counter variable we then take and we start a switch case and then we check our step which remember is that global variable we talked about that let's it, we start from whichever step we've last been in whichever point in the sequence we last were in is where we'll start so we're going to check to see if we're in one two three four steps sequence so that's what the case one two three four is we're checking to see which step we're in so we can continue on so what we do is, for step one, we're on, 
So we output high on mag 1, output low on mag 2, off, output high on mag 3, on, and mag 4 we output off. So there's the on, off, on, off. And then we change our step to 2, because now since we've stepped, since we've done the sequence, we are now moved on to step 2. So we change our, our stepping to 2, and then we delay for the next step. Then this will loop, come through, come back to step 2, and perform step 2. On, off, off, on. High, low, low, high. And then increment to step 3, and then go through. And this will do this, it will run through the stepping however many steps there are. See? It'll count, and it'll just keep running through the sequence. 1 to 4, 1 to 4, 1 to 4, 1 to 4. It'll keep running through that sequence until until you get through. Now, similarly, that's for clockwise rotation. Just so you know, that's for clockwise rotation. You do this sequence. 1, 2, 3, 4 is this sequence. For counterclockwise rotation, you go the other way. You go from the bottom up on this table. So, similarly, for the reversing function, we just literally copy and paste it. We literally take off, on, on, off, and that's the first one. And then on, off, on, off, that's the next one. And you know, and so on and so forth. And so now it's now it's different. So you go basically from top down to go for to go clockwise, you go from bottom to top to go counterclockwise in rotation. Very simple. So now what we do is coming to our main function, we set up our tri-state registers for output. All is output. We output, we initialize everything to low. All the transistors are off. Nothing's conducting, no electricity's flowing, nothing. Now, we, in, we set our step as at sequence number one, okay, because we're initialized, we're initial state. Sequence is one. So now, we move the stepper forward 50 steps. Then I just put a little delay in there. We delay um, for two seconds. And then we move it backwards 50 steps. So hopefully, if all goes well, we should go forward 50 steps and backwards 50 steps. <coughs> and so that's basically, um, that's basically it in a nutshell. Remember this sequence, because um, that's the sequence in which you want to deal with. Uh, like I said, if we want, we can. Uh, I can show you how to do um, half-stepping, if we want to do half-stepping, um, and things like that, some different stepping deals. Um, I can do that. I w I'm going to try to copy this page that I'm looking at you guys can't see. I'm going to try to copy that off and uh, post that somehow so that you guys can see it <coughs> because it, it has a lot of very good information on it. Also, um, I have built this. Uh, I'll be trying to post the movie of it actually constructed and put together so that you can see it actually turning and moving and doing what it's supposed to be doing with this basic, basic code and that basic uh, layout of components. So um, that's going to be in the future. Um, please subscribe. Please uh, comment. Let me know if uh, you need any other information because sometimes these can be tricky. They can be difficult to deal with. Oh, and, and let me know if those of you it would be beneficial to see a stepper motor sizing video where we actually size uh, stepper motors for different loads and torques and things. So um, thanks, for the, thanks for that. Uh, please comment. I've got some other stuff on the horizon that should be pretty cool. Um, other uh, little videos for um, doing the I squared C protocol. Um, USB implementation. Um, I've ordered some hardware components for that, so we might be doing a little USB. Um, it's pretty cool stuff. So please continue to subscribe. Um, tell your friends. Uh, let everybody know. Um, and uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you for watching.